Good evening and welcome to the February 27, 2020 regular meeting of the school committee. I'm going to call the meeting to order and I would ask that all who are here and would like to join us to please rise in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I am filling in tonight as our chair, as our chair is unable to be here, but uh, we're going to pull things a little bit out of order to bring Mr. Bishop up first because he has another commitment for the school. Hey, you want to come over here just visually so you can see your... We're cozy group tonight. Yeah. It's a little chilly in here, isn't it? Um, yes. So we are going uh, down to what is this is high studies. school program of studies, new which business is new business. Okay, thank you. And thank you so much for taking me out of order. I appreciate it. Uh, our boys' basketball team is in the state tournament tonight, okay. playing over at Grafton. Great. They're up 13 to 11 at the end of the first quarter. So uh, we're hoping to kind of catch the second half after this presentation. Awesome. Uh, and as always, I'm, I'm excited to come and, and talk each year about the program of studies. Um, it is uh, a, a process that we start pretty early on in the school year. Uh, we begin the conversations usually around mid-November um, and wrap up typically around February, February vacation. Uh, and I meet with building administrators, uh, meet with SMLs multiple times, teachers, and of course students. We always want to get their feedback in the process. Um, and we kind of do a, what I call an internal audit, so to speak, with each department. Uh, where we talk with teachers and SMLs about the vision and the mission of each department. Are we meeting state standards? Um, what's working? Are we offering what students want to take in each one of these disciplines? And of course, we talk about the financials. And if we're going to add something, how is it going to work? Um, and I look forward to those conversations each and every year. It, it gives us an opportunity with a critical eye to kind of dig a little bit deeper into our departments and figure out, you know, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and maybe if we're missing something. Um, so anytime a new course is proposed, it's a pretty um, uh, detailed process. Uh, teachers need to submit a uh, course description, um, and we kind of go through that. Not every course is approved through this process. Oftentimes we say it might not work next year based on a variety of different reasons. Um, this year, there is no cost to any of these seven classes that we're putting in the program of studies, uh, which might come as a surprise to some, but that's just kind of the way the process works. We have more courses in our program of studies than we're able to offer. Uh, and oftentimes, it's based on student interest. Whatever the students are signing up for, will run. So uh, we're hoping these seven classes will run next year, but uh, if they don't, then, then they don't. And, uh, and if they do, then probably seven other classes most, most likely won't run the following year. So that's just kind of how the process works. Um, and as always, usually teachers will come forward because they're passionate about wanting to teach a new class. That's usually kind of how classes come about. Um, and we always give them the PD that they need to be able to, to execute the lessons and, 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 and the curriculum. And, uh, this year we have an AP class that we're adding, so we're going to be sending that staff member to the AP training in the spring. So we always want to make sure that we give people the proper training to teach these classes. Uh, so just a little bit about the, the timeline and the, and, the, and the process. I believe you uh, have a handout, I hope, with, with our kind of details of when things are coming up. Um, so this past week, ending tomorrow, the teachers here at the high school have been inputting their course requests for the students, the 9th, 10th, 11th grade students. Um, we will be communicating with parents and students on Monday about the process. We'll be sharing this video as well as a few other resources for them. Uh, and then they'll have between March 4th and March 11th to sign up for their courses. Uh, we always encourage students to uh, follow their teacher's recommendations. The teachers know them best in the classroom. Um, but if a student does disagree with their placement, then we do have an override process. Uh, and so that deadline is on March 13th, which is two days after the course selection process. Uh, on average, I was looking back over the years, the last three years, we have about 250 override requests per year. So as you can imagine, that kind of takes quite a bit of time. Uh, not 250 students necessarily. There could be one student that has more than one override request. But just in general, I wanted to give you a sense of how many requests that we do receive when it comes to the override process. Not every one of those is approved as well. Uh, they meet with the SMLs for each different department, and sometimes we'll meet with the assistant principal as well as part of that process. Um, and then basically after that, our counselors and our um, Linda Henderson, our data manager, really step in and kind of develop the, 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 the schedule. Uh, I'll meet with counselors and Linda to talk about what courses we might not want to run for the particular year based on enrollment. Um, and then they'll really work over the course of April after the override process is complete in May to kind of 
develop our master schedule. So that's really kind of the timeline. I believe I give you a kind of a detailed list of that, and we'll send that out to parents as well as part of our communication. Uh, and we're also excited. We have a new video that we've created this year. Um, in the past, we've done class meetings. We brought the students together and kind of talked to them about the process. And we felt we wanted to do something different this year. And so with the help of Jim Cousins, who's one of our teachers and also uh, works at HCAM, uh, and our HHS Today TV students, they've put together this course selection um, video. It's about eight minutes long. Um, we, I asked the, the SMLs to really kind of think about, in a minute, talking about why a student would want to take a class in your department. And so that's really kind of um, how this video came about. So I'd like to play it now. Right. What's up, HHS? Believe it or not, it's course selection time for next school year. As opposed to having class meetings, as we've had in the past, we put together a video on how to select classes and also what's new and exciting for offerings next year. The sign-up process begins on Wednesday, March 4th, and the online request portal in PowerSchool will close on Wednesday, March 11th. As always, we recommend courses and levels that both challenge you, but also offer the best opportunity for success. I encourage you to talk to your teachers about what courses to take, as they know you best. Now, if I can offer one piece of advice as you begin this process, I would encourage you to resist the urge to take courses just because you feel you have to or because you feel pressure from colleges that you have to. Do what's best for you. Take classes that you're truly interested in. I am often asked by students how many CP, honors, or AP classes they should take. And my response is always, it depends. It depends on the student. It depends on what you're passionate about. It depends on how busy you are outside of school with extracurriculars. And it depends on how well you manage your time and handle multiple demands. Trust me on this, while courses you take at high school are important, they are not the be-all and all for your future. Students will get into college whether they take zero APs over four years or five APs in a semester. Your post-secondary high school plan, whatever that may be, is just the beginning of something and not the end result. There are many paths to success and happiness that you get to define, not others. So with that in mind, do your best when picking your courses. Challenge yourself, but keep in mind not only your academic needs and wants, but also your social emotional, mental, and physical well-being, too. Now let's hear from our amazing subject matter leaders. In the history and social science department at Hopkins High School, we care a lot about the social and emotional growth of our students, and we really work to systematize that in our daily practices. We have a three-year progression of courses that are mandatory, and we have a wide array of electives that I think you might find quite interesting, but mostly what we care about is nurturing an environment in which you feel safe and comfortable, but also one in which we remain open to changing our minds, teachers as well as students. We really care a great deal about you as a person and really look forward to having you in our classes. So please investigate that program of studies and let us see what you might like to take in history and social science. When you take a science class, regardless of grade or level, you will learn skills that you can use beyond the science classroom through computer-based experiments, dissection, inquiry-based laboratories, and independent science projects. Students are provided with a range of opportunities for science exploration. When you learn about science, you will become a better problem solver and critical thinker. You will work collaboratively with others and share your ideas. You will be able to support an argument using evidence. But most importantly, you'll have fun. The science department is filled with caring and compassionate teachers who are dedicated to creating learning environments that are engaging and who will challenge you to do your best. What science class are you going to sign up for? We're going to offer two new courses this year in mathematical modeling. You will look at a set of equations, formulas, and applications to model real-world situations. The statistics of sports class looks pretty interesting because uh, you're going to be analyzing statistics for professional teams or your local HHS teams. We're going to be running an honor statistics class if you're looking for uh, to be a STEM major or a business major, or if you're just a student who likes math and wants more of it. We have band, concert, symphonic band, concert band, mixed chorus and treble chorus, orchestra, guitar class, and we're starting a new class next year, sort of a music theory, composition, and songwriting class. Um, these are all great electives to take, and we invite anyone, even if you haven't played in a long time or sang in a long time, or even want to learn how to play guitar, or you're a songwriter and you just want to like get things down on paper, we invite you to come and take some classes in the music department. 
In the English department, the focus is on growth as readers, writers, and thinkers, and you will have the opportunity to develop and demonstrate these skills. You will learn how to interrogate the narrative, a skill you will need as you move through the world. You need to be able to collaborate, effectively communicate, think deeply, and write well in order to meet the demands of our ever-changing world. Students at HHS can also choose to take an elective from the English department, ranging from literature, creative writing, journalism, nonfiction, mythology, and film courses. Please choose to take more than one English class in your journey through high school. In business technology and engineering, you're going to have a great time. The skills that you'll learn in our department are fantastic. They're transferable skills, such as soft skills, where you'll be able to communicate well with other people and work in teams, as well as being able to solve problems that have a tremendous impact on our world. While you're working in our department to develop these skills, you'll have access to fantastic tools and resources that are used in industry. In television, you'll be able to use editing software that's professional grade. In engineering and robotics, you'll be able to use materials and fabrication tools such as 3D printers and uh, laser cutters. In computer science, you're going to use compilers that are used at, at a professional level. And in business, you'll engage in entrepreneurship projects that simulate exactly what you'll do in business. We always say down here that in other courses, people enjoy the classes, but after school, when you come down on the sea wing, you'll find that people live down here. Bonjour, je suis Madame Waterloo. Hola, soy Senor Lutes. We represent the World Language Department at the Hopkinton High School. There are many reasons to take a world language, and we're here to give you a few of the best ones. Knowing a world language gives you a competitive edge in career options. Learning another language is linked to higher academic achievement. World language study expands your worldview and your understanding of cultures and beliefs that may be different from your own. Studying another language creates deeper interest in the arts, such as film, literature, and music. You may graduate with the seal of Bailitoshi on your diploma. Please check out the details on the Street website. Language learning takes time. It takes lots of practice and serious dedication. So choose the language that is most interesting to you and stick with it. Dedicate yourself to learning another language. Become a global citizen. At Hopkinton High School, we value your well-being, and we know that students who are healthy and physically active do better academically. Our goal is that you become physically literate, you have the confidence and the competence to effectively participate in activity. It is also extremely valuable to us that we help you find balance in the day so you can enjoy good social and emotional health. You learn about physical fitness, about nutrition, communication skills, substance abuse and addiction, human sexuality, and healthy relationship. You want to learn how to dance, you want to learn how to defend yourself, you want to participate in some outdoor activities, you want to learn how to officiate a, a sport, we've got a little something for everybody. Taking a class in the art wing is for everyone. It's a place where everyone can flourish. The arts allow free thinking and allow you to develop your personal voice. They also challenge you. We have something for everyone, from photography to ceramics to art history to painting and drawing. Technology is also infused throughout our curriculum. I encourage you to try something new and take a risk next year. If you'd like more descriptions of our courses, check out our webpage where you can also see examples of student work, hear from our students, and see examples of our curriculum. We are also really excited to offer a few new courses next year, including Aeronautical Engineering, a class called the Science of Happiness, AP Macroeconomics, an Adobe Certification course, and we also have Sports Analysis, Mathematical Modeling, an Intro to Music Theory Composition with a Songwriting Component. Now we encourage you to read through the program of studies and take full advantage of the opportunities offered here at Hockington High School and to select the right academic program for you. If you have any questions about the process, please see your school counselor. Thank you, and good luck. I like it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah, Jim did a great job, and, and the kids who helped them out, we really appreciate their efforts. So that'll be uh, sent out to parents and students on Monday, along with the program of studies, kind of the how-to guide of how to operate uh, Power School when signing up for classes, as well as our uh, time management worksheet, which is new. We, it's a, uh, we, we've come up with this with collaboration with Challenge Success, and it's basically uh, a, a document that we're going to share, and it's, it's, students don't have to use it, but we're going to encourage them to use it, uh, for them to kind of put down how they're going to allocate their time. 
uh, and it's a worksheet that kind of talks about how do you spend, how much time do you spend at school, how much time on homework, extracurriculars, unstructured time, as well as sleep. And you kind of average out how many hours you have in, in a day and in a week, and making sure that you are kind of setting up yourself for success based on the time that you need to spend on all these different things. So um, that's new this year as well, in, in addition to the video. So. Could you share that worksheet with the school committee when yes, you're, when yeah. you're yep. ready to publish it? Yep, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. That sounds fabulous. Yeah, uh, so we're excited about that. So I did mention the new courses. I know that you have um, the memo in front of you as well. There are seven new courses that we're hoping to add. Uh, intro to Music Theory with Composition uh, with the songwriting component. And we're able to use, uh, which we're excited about, our um, kind of mobile um, recording studio that we, we uh, received as part of our substance abuse grant last year, which we're excited about. So that'll be part of that course. Uh, in our uh, business technology and engineering department, there's going to be multiple classes we're adding. You heard AP macroeconomics, uh, aeronautical engineering, which really came about because of our drone club and that excitement that was uh, building. Uh, and Mr. Ghosh and Mr. Scott kind of collaborating together. So we're really excited about that course. Um, we have what we call the BTE capstone, so the business technology and engineering capstone class for those students who have kind of exhausted all of the classes within that department, which is quite a few. Uh, so they'll be working on specific projects, those students that have taken computer science A and computer science principles, uh, and that will be taught by Mr. Scott. You heard about the two different math classes that we're going to be offering for some different options for juniors and seniors, try to have some fun options for them in the math department, in addition to calculus, pre-calculus, not that those are not fun, but just different options for students. Um, and the Adobe certification uh, class, which we're excited about, so they're actually going to be able to walk out of that class, pending the exam at the end, with the certification for That's Adobe. Awesome. Yeah, which is really wonderful. And, and Miss Jeannie O'Connell Jr. is going to be teaching that class. So, those are the new additions. Uh, we also, I mentioned the science of happiness. That's the old stress management class. We've done some research and wanted to kind of change the title and change up a few things on that. So um, we've done some research, and Karen Reno has been wonderful. So that's not a new class; it's just to kind of change the, of, a, of an existing class. So it's a great title change. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So that's really um, kind of the changes and, and some of the uh, additions to the program of studies. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. That's great. Looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. I agree. I do have a uh, comment from our chair, Mina Baroth, who is not able to be with us. Yes. She said, I am, uh, with regard to the high school and the middle school as well, program of studies, I am most excited to learn of the thoughtful courses which always make me want to enroll. I, I have to echo that. <laughs> Mathematical mod modeling sounds very exciting. I am fully supportive of the request brought forth. Okay, so that, um, if there are no other questions or comments, I would seek a motion to approve. I'm sorry, were you gonna? No, I think it looks great. Oh, yeah, I think it looks great as well. Look, seeking a motion to approve the 2020 to 2021 uh, high school program of studies. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Good luck. Again, thank you so much for moving oh, absolutely. around the agenda. Yeah. I really appreciate that. And I will share with you the, yeah. I know, yeah. And I'll share the time management worksheet with all of you. Awesome. That's great. Look great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Go Hillers, right? That's great. Do you want to go back? Um, sure. We, let's do that. So, Mr. Keller, would you like to come out of order and come up since we've just finished with the high school? We'll call you a little early if you're okay with that. <laughs> so that is going to bring us to new business uh, item B, uh, or do you, uh, you can go B, C, however you want to do it. You want to do your program of studies first or your stipends? Um, program studies, okay. preferably, if I may. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, the 2020-2021 uh, Hopkins Middle School program of, study, program of studies is included. Uh, we did, we've made a lot of formatting changes this year, not an extensive amount of content changes, um, but I'll mention the ones that I um, put forth in the memo to Dr. Kavanaugh. Uh, the first is our grade six health class. Uh, we looked at our curriculum have been looking at our curriculum, our health curriculum, uh, for some time. I felt like grade six was an area of, of an opportunity for growth. Um, so Karen Renault, who you just saw in the video, by the way, my video was having technical difficulties, so I won't be uh, showing that tonight. Um, but um, that was impressive from Mr. Bishop and, and, the, and the crew. But um, so Karen Renault, who's a subject matter leader for uh, wellness, had been working with Stacy Place, our health teacher, as well as the health teachers at the elementary level, and began looking at this Jesse Lewis Choose Love curriculum program. Um, Jesse Lewis is one of the students who was killed in Sandy Hook. 
Um, and so um, his mother and a group of educators began putting together uh, this curriculum, which is focused on safer schools uh, and delivering to students life skills that are essential uh, to happiness and success. And this program, uh, they were very impressed with this program, and uh, it aligns nicely to our district strategic plan around social emotional learning. Um, so we're implementing that. Um, physical education course, uh, so in grade eight, physical, uh, students in physical education have the opportunity to take part in electives. And that's been in place uh, for at least 10 years. Um, those electives have never actually been part of our program of studies. So this year, we felt uh, it was important to get those into our program of studies. So you'll find those now included on page 21. Um, and for the past two years, we've had a program called Math Squared. Uh, this is a program that was for our, our students who struggle the most in math. And over the years, in having conversations with students, uh, with, a, with the staff at Hopkins in our transition meetings, um, they felt as though, as, as did we, that this uh, program uh, offered them an opportunity to get caught up. Um, so it has had some success. Uh, however, there are two reasons why we're getting rid of it. Um, the first is that we, ha in our initial transition meetings with the staff at Hopkins, they felt as though they did not have any students who, for whom this class would be needed. So that's a good thing. Um, and then the second piece is, the past two years, students who have been in math squared are missing a related arts class. And so that's that's been a tough tough situation, both in terms of parents and students, and ultimately we feel as though one of our strengths as a middle school is our rich um, offerings in related arts and giving students the opportunity and exposure to those different skills and classes. And so uh, we're looking at a variety of other ways. So we have a foundations class in, in our program of studies that we can enroll students in um, that will uh, take um, take the place of some of those pieces and those will be able to get the related arts courses. So, so we're dropping math squared for that reason. Uh, the next item on here is our social studies uh, course in grade seven is changing. So in 2018, Massachusetts released its new social studies stand standards. Um, this year in grades six and grade eight, our, our um, program has changed. Uh, grade seven did not, and that will next year. So um, the sequence is in grade six, world geography and ancient civilizations one, which a current grade six is taking. And when those kids go into grade seven next year, they'll be part of a new course called world geography and ancient civilizations two. And then in eighth grade, uh, you know, the United States and Massachusetts government and civic life, which our current eighth graders are taking. So the change is to grade seven for next year as we phase that in. And then finally, um, our counseling services now include descriptions of our START and EMPOWER programs. And so we, those haven't been previously part of our program of studies. START is in its fifth year, will be in its fifth year next year, and EMPOWER will be in its third year. And like our physical education electives, we felt like that was an oversight for those not to be in our program of studies. So those are now included in there. Very glad start is listed. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it looked great, and um, you know, we had some exchange on email. But I just want to point out that how happy I am that the math curriculum seems to have, um, you know, over the last decade or so, there have <laughs> been some different pathways, and we've been very stable for a few years. And, and I had inquired about the success. It seems like we're um, in a really good place with the new eighth grade options for algebra, giving kids choice to be in the right. Place, and then when they go to high school, there are ways to move to different pathways. If you start at one pathway, you can double up on a math. Or, and I do know of many students who have done those kinds of things successfully. So I'm just, I just want to thank you for, yeah. for uh, all the work that has gone on over the last decade yeah. to get to where we are today, because it seems like we're in a pretty good place. Thank you. I appreciate that. It definitely, there's definitely been years where I've, uh, in the past decade, as you mentioned, uh, it's, it's where I felt like let's, not make a change, but ultimately in talking to students and parents and educators, we felt as though uh, there were certain changes that needed to be made. And so um, I think that this will be going on our third year of having the current configuration and what we're hearing from students, parents, and high school teachers and middle school teachers is that this is working and we're getting kids in the right places. And, and as you pointed out, they're, they're flexible enough to allow for some movement. And especially the eighth grade path has opened up options for those in seventh grade who weren't quite ready for pre-algebra, but are still getting into an algebra class in grade eight. So that's that's been a particularly um, uh, positive uh, change. It's exciting. It's exciting to see that it's, it's working well. So Yeah, thank you for noting that. And it's exciting to see how sophisticated it is compared to when I was in middle school <laughs> decades ago that you offer these fabulous technology and engineering courses for 11 and 12 year olds. It's, it's a wonderful beginning for them. It is. For those who have that yes. talent and interest. 
Yeah, and that's definitely, you know, there are kids who are, who come in with a lot of experience, and so we're, um, I think we're meeting their needs, but also students who have no experience whatsoever and, and are kind of getting their appetites wet. And then, you know, we have our ro robotics club that um, is has, uh, I think it's about 96 kids enrolled in it. So we're definitely meeting the needs. And a, lo a ton of credit, Dr. Kevin and I, were have, and, and I were having a conversation today, a ton of credit goes to Doug Scott, who's done some yeah, fantastic work. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, I never thought I'd say that middle school looks intellectually exciting, but no, <laughs> it does. Thank you. It, it has does. certainly changed quite a bit from back in the, I went to a junior back high. Back in the day. <laughs> We're showing our long teeth now. <laughs> So, I, again, uh, Ms. Barat did express support for your program of studies via email. Um, if there are no other questions, let's go ahead. seek a motion to approve the 2020 to 2021 uh, middle school program studies. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And it is passed. Uh, and then you have some stipend requests. I do. However, I am going to... Uh, we'll look to Dr. Kavanaugh because unfortunately I did not bring that in front of me. Oh, I apologize. Okay. okay, I'll tell you what it is okay, and you can you. describe <laughs> it. Uh, so, Mr. Keller is looking for uh, $500 that would be paid out of the Drama Revolving Club for a yes. choreography right. for your I, HMS Spring Musical. Yeah, so this, uh, the, our Spring Musical has uh, some complex and complicated dance moves, I'm told. Um, I will not. I am actually in the musical, but I will not be taking part in any of the com complex dance moves. But um, so uh, our director uh, Allison Porter has asked if we could uh, hire a choreographer. So that's what that yeah. is really to. And that it's coming out of the drama, drama revolving club, so it's of no cost to the, the district. Yes. So. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Yeah. 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 I would seek a motion to approve that. Then. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. That's exciting. I, the middle school drama program, I think, really is a, an area of pride for our district, comparable to other middle schools in the area. Absolutely, yes. It has been. Question. All right. And your other one is uh, Magic Gathering Club stipend, oh, which would be replaced by Chess Club stipend. Yeah, so Chess Club, uh, the, the teacher who has been running Chess Club for the past several years uh, decided that he wanted to go in a different direction this year. Uh, so he's uh, spent his, he took over our recycling club. Uh, and so we had an opportunity to replace it with something. And so a lot of students, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering, but a lot of students um, are really excited about Magic the Gathering. So Mr. Casey, who is our school psychologist, um, has been meeting informally with students. Um, it is a card game uh, that I guess I could best compare it to Pokemon. Um, and so students have been really excited about it. Mr. Casey was able to get a bunch of um, um, free deck sets from Magic the Gathering Company, and so um, so that is the request. We have, he's got about, I think, nine students right now who are very excited about oh, it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, and I will also note that um, Ms. Baroth expressed support for the stipends as well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I love the diversity of the after school program, and there's something for everybody, and I think the idea of, of finding a place for kids to stay after school in the school community and socialize and, you know, do whatever it is that, that they're interested in is phenomenal. Yes. So, you know, connecting with the school outside of class, I think, only breeds success. So yes. it's great. Great. Thank you. So I would seek a motion to approve uh, the Magic Gathering Club stipend to replace the chess club stipend. So moved. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. So your stipends Thank you very have much. been approved. Thank you very much. Thank and you for helping me out there. Oh, <laughs> <definitely. Anytime. laughs> Thanks for coming tonight. Of course. Thank you're you free to stay for everything. Thank you. Rest of your I appreciate that. Or you can watch on <laughs> HCAM. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Good night, Alan. So we're going to go circle back. So th that brings us back to recognitions. I don't know if anybody had any recognitions for this evening that they wanted to share with the community. Um, if not, I, we can go into public comments. Is there anybody here uh, from the public who would like to make a comment? Um, seeing nobody coming forward, um, we can move into the superintendent's report. Okay. Did you want me to run through Mrs. Rothermick's report very quickly? Oh, I did not realize you had. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yes, so she can't be with us tonight, um, but she did ask me to run through this um, very quickly. And that would be great. I mean, I think that we are accustomed to looking at this. Um, in terms of the payroll account, uh, we are running in the positive in personal attrition. 
um, in the column changes less than so where teachers were expecting I think to do lane changes we are ahead of place because uh, that is currently less than what had been budgeted and the salary reserve is also positive at 23,836 uh, naturally we had a number of positions that we added after the budget process in the amount of 313,818 so currently um, if you take a look at the payroll accounts it's running in the negative at 124,369 um, in expense, we are doing well in terms of our out-of-district tuitions. They are running ahead at 145,724. Uh, there are also um, some things running in the negative there, school committee legal. Um, equipment repair and maintenance at the high school, um, special education, home tutoring, special education, contracted services, homeless transportation, and miscellaneous. Those are very, very small amounts, um, but currently we are, our grand total in our variance is at a negative 50,906. Okay. Knock on wood. Yes. All right. Thank you. So I will go quickly also through my report. Um, I don't have a whole lot more since Monday, but I did want to share with you some of our celebrations around STEAM, that great big picture that you see on the opening page. Those are all of the students who took part in the science fair this week. Um, I will also be showing you some enrollment data and a little bit of budget update, and we've already gone through the high school sc course selection video. So just some of our STEAM events. Um, we had STEAM night at the Elmwood School that took place on February 12th. Um, as usual, there were so, so many families. It's really a lovely event. And you know I have to thank Mrs. Carver and Mr. Demon. But really, I think that there are three teachers, Laura Halloran, uh, Bridget Marzilli and Beth Newton who have been with STEAM sort of organically since we began and this really has grown I, mean, I think really as a result of their efforts. Uh, the science fair was here on Tuesday. Uh, the students that you see in the upper right hand corner those were our um, sort of student winners but as we like to say all of our kids gain something and win something as a result of their participation. I think about 42 students presented, but overall there were 100 students who took part this year. That's great. Yeah. And will we be having the uh, winners in as we have? Yes, so I think that they're going off to WPI now to compete at a different level. So even though those are the ones who were the winners in um, our science fair, I believe we're sending 15 projects. Oh, wow. Yes. That's great. So. Uh, we have had Mrs. Lachansky working as a STEAM consultant to the district, and we have uh, just recently had some of our students go out on job shadowing, which was really exciting for us. Uh, so the pie chart that you see at the bottom, those are just the places where our kids went. Those businesses in town um, or in neighboring communities have been really lovely about taking our students. Um, and, you know, all students from sort of all walks of life took part in this and almost to a one they talked about just how valuable the experience was I did include one student's quote um, up at the top where that student says I think my biggest takeaway not mentioned above was learning that an exceptional resume won't be enough for someone to earn a job people who want a job should have the required experience from internships and other hands-on training or have the will to learn how to help the company rather than having the highest test scores something that surprised me was learning how employees have to consider factors that affect the company through different career fields. For example, an engineer's job may be to design and solve problems with a set of solar panels, but the engineer may have to consider other parts of it, like the cost of production, sales, and even overlooking the installation of a solar panel to ensure its ability to work. This may also include employees working with others with different career types in the same field. Um, so we just have so many of those, like sort of big learnings and appreciation. Um, and so I also wanted to just have a little shout out to Senate President Karen Spilka who has made a lot of this possible for us. That's great. Yeah, it was really exciting. Um, in terms of enrollment, Drum this is very exciting. Did we hit 4,000? 3,999 today. Um, and you know we update every couple weeks. Uh, so we hadn't since February 6th. So in the last um, 21 days, I think we brought 
in about eight new students, what got us right to the threshold of 4,000. You know, so large bell very in town exciting. To ring for that fourth thousand. Yes. As soon as we hit 4,000, we'll, we'll be showered with dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to, in central office. They'll just come flying out of the ceiling. <laughs> Um, but it will be interesting. We'll always know who student number 4,000 was. <laughs> right. um, and then on Tuesday evening, uh, a few of us were able to attend the town manager, the bo select board meeting where the town manager delivered his report on budget um, and specifically to have discussion about the budget shortfall. So there were really three options presented. The first was to take the unanticipated Chapter 70 money. For people who don't know what Chapter 70 money is, that's sort of earmarked for schools. And you know, we typically get you know, a lesser amount. But I think because of our increased enrollment, because of our L students, and because of the Student Opportunity Act money, our uh, Chapter 70 money was up about 480000 from where we anticipated it might be. So our town manager talked about taking that uh, alongside the $831,000 that would be a legacy farms sort of overdue payment according to the host community agreement. And the school deficit right now is at $1.4 million. That would get us closed within a $200,000 gap. Um, currently, the problem with that is that we haven't received the $831,000 in legacy farms money. And the legacy farms money does fall under the purview of the school committee and town meeting, really, not necessarily under the select board. And um, as we are often reminded when we go to budgeting meetings, it's very poor budgeting for a community to take these sort of one-time payments and put it toward the operating budget. Um, as our friend Mr. O'Leary, the town CFO, likes to say, it's like taking that birthday money from your grandmother and paying your mortgage with it. Just a, a general bad idea. So there's one way to take a look at closing the gap. The second is a proposition two and a half override. Um, last year, you know that the town voted for a proposition two and a half underride. I believe the savings on that underride were, according to some of the budget documents we've received, about 1.2 million. So if we take the 1.7 million, that is the deficit for all of the municipal entities, not just the schools, and we take away the almost 500,000 that we received for State Chapter 70, we're still $1.2 million in the hole. So right now it seems like the savings from last year have become a cost for this year. Um, and then option three, the schools and other municipal departments work on trimming their budgets. Um, just to be very clear where the schools would be, if we subtracted the 500000 almost 500000 in Chapter 70 money um, from our shortfall, which is $1.4 the schools would still need to cut $900,000, um, and the rest of the town would need to cut $300,000. A $900,000 cut to the schools would result in huge class sizes and truthfully diminished services and programs. Um, but in a budget meeting today, uh, we were reassured by the town manager, really, that he is not looking to ask us to make $900,000 worth of cuts, so we can feel better about that. All right, and the only other thing that you know I am thinking about budget is that I'm starting to feel like decisions will need to be made so that our building principals and central office administrators can really start to plan for 2021. Um, it was different when we were talking in January and in February, but we are on March's doorstep. So it is time for us to think about our budget requests, our current teachers, and the programs that we offer. And my last couple of pictures there are just some winter doings at the middle school. Um, I believe that we just had the boys' basketball banquet, so you can see them enjoying a banquet together. And in the lower right, uh, there was the yogurt and mindfulness night. Oh, so. yes. That's great. And that's that. Super. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So then that brings us into the school committee chair report and the school committee chair has approved payroll warrant 20017 the warrant has been included in your packet and has approved warrants 20-041 and 20-042 also are in your packet i also um, attended the budget advisory committee today in mina's place 
uh, just so that I could accompany Dr. Cavanaugh and report back. There's beyond what was at town meeting, there really isn't much to report, but they will continue to meet every week um, until we get through this. So. Any uh, liaison reports? I have none. Okay. In that case, um, that brings us into office hours. Do we have, did we settle on which of the concerts we we're don't, going to go? I don't think we did. Okay. So we should circle back offline on that so we okay. can get that out and advertise them. Yep. So then that brings us into old business item A, and that's the superintendent summative evaluation rubric indicators, and that's you. I think that's me. Dr. Kavanaugh, are you able to pull up the rubric? I am. Okay. Um, so where we are with this, uh, as you recall, I think it was back in January, um, we shared some information about the superintendent evaluation process. And one of the important things that we shared was that it is recommended by MASC and MASS that the school committee picks um, a set of indicators, not every indicator, so that we look at each of the standards and that we and indicators and pick maybe six to eight total for the evaluation for the superintendent. Um, last year, we did an evaluation on all of the indicators. Um, and I think what a lot of us found is that we, we were repeating ourselves as we were looking at evidence. Um, there is some overlap, and it does take the focus off of the things that we've deemed most important this year through the superintendent's goals and the district's strategic priorities. So by kind of stepping back and looking at the strategic priorities um, that we had, Dr. Kavanaugh had developed last year and looking at the goals for this year, um, maybe taking those two main elements and trying to pick a subset that we can agree on so that we give substantive, meaningful evaluation feedback on the things that we've deemed critical for this year. And the one thing I'll say that um, came up in the training, or was tra orientation of this uh, process, was that if, if there is another indicator that throughout the year, after you've picked a subset, something else comes up, you can note it and highlight that for the following year. So it's not to say that, you know, I mean, you can kind of keep an eye on everything, but um, you can always put off and, and add that into next year's evaluation. If it's something that comes up and you think, oh, you know, I'd like to give some feedback, you can give informal feedback, you can document it, but you can also put it in the following year. Yeah. Which, which brings us to where we are today. So up here we have a shorthand look at the, um, the four standards, and then under, what am I looking at, Dr. Kavanaugh? Under each, so 1A, right, so the, and yes. then each of the indicators underneath. So when we refer to them, we like 1A would be standard one, instructional leadership, A would be curriculum indicator. So I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at these at all, um, but I, one way we can go about this is um, Dr. Kavanaugh took a pass at what kind of bubbles up when looking at the strategic priorities and her goals, um, and maybe if you could share that, we could start at, with that as a base, and then if people want to whittle or add, we can go from there. Sure. Does that make sense? Yep. I'm going to have to dig them out of this laptop. Though. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, that's okay. So, so it, it, I have them while you're going through that. Sure, that would be fine. So, just ask for clarification. Yes. So, ultimately, what you want us to do is kind of choose two from each column. That was my kind of feeling. Um, Two to three, but okay. um, you know we can at least start. I think these should be evenly distributed. There should be probably at least two per column. If sure. there's a third one in the column that really means something, then we can add that too. There's no hard and fast. It's just again to focus our work. So while she's pulling that up, I will just read what Mina has sent along. Uh, she, she said, "I don't think we can go wrong with what we choose." In the end, it is an ongoing process. I care to see the elements which so showcase our superintendent's vision, culture setting, ability to do more through delegation, conflict resolution strategy. I agree with most items circled in the rubric. Two additions for the committee's consideration. In standard three, items B and D, sharing responsibilities and family concerns. With regard to the process procedure, my suggestion is to complete at least the individual member review process prior to the election in May to give outgoing members an opportunity to provide their respective feedback having reviewed the work through the year. While some members may be re-elected, newly elected members will not have the perspective needed to perform an end-of-year review. Okay. 
I think for tonight, I don't just, think we're yeah. doing procedure yet, yep. um, but we'll definitely factor that in when we come back with procedure. I think for tonight, we're trying to figure out which indicators. Dr. Kevin, I have them. If you want to just pull the chart up, I can, I can highlight the ones. I have what you sent out. Okay. I can talk to it if you want. I think I've got it right And there they are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the first first category, instructional leadership. Not sure why I just did that. There we go. Sorry. Um, effective and rigor rigorous curriculum units, um, and that kind of aligns with your goal four, which I had. On. Goal four for you was launch initiatives that build innovative learning opportunities for students. So the idea of having effective and rigorous curriculum units seems to align closely. And it also aligns with our strategic priorities um, to prioritize high quali quality <coughs> curriculum, instruction, and assessments, and the implementation of best practices, and to launch initiatives that build leadership, innovation, and practical and agile programmatic expansion. So. Um, the second one, instruction, high expectations and engagement, again, aligns with goal four um, and the str st same strategic priorities. And data-informed decision-making, again, goes with your goal, four, mm -hmm. your goal four, I believe. The, the ones that you didn't pick, can we toggle back to the chart? I think so. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. There we go. So the ones you didn't pick were assessment indicator mm -hmm. and evaluation indicator. Yes, and I think, so something like D, um, the evaluation indicator, um, observation and feedback performance ratings, those sorts of things. So as superintendent, I am responsible for the evaluation of all of the directors who work in central office, as well as all of the building principals. So that's, that's work that will just naturally happen, I think. And I think another thing that's interesting about C, the assessment indicator, uh, because of E, data-informed decision-making, there's almost a natural use of some of those assessments. You know, so for example, just the other day, uh, Mr. Ghosh and I were talking about, you know, our PLCs and the degree to which teachers take all of the data that we have. So for example, with elementary reading, you might have BAS data, QRI data, STAR reading data, MCAS data, you know, just locally uh, developed reading assessments, all of that. Um, and then, you know, the question becomes, how is it that teachers are making adjustments to practice? So if you find that child who's struggling with reading and you know it because you've got all of those various metrics, what about C2, adjustment to practice? So we do think that that's happening, and it really does happen, I think, at the building level, sort of under the supervision of our principals. So I think just for me, um, it almost made better sense to do A, B, and, and E, but I'm certainly open to discussion. I had, I had picked A and B, like mm -hmm. when I sort of went through it on my own. I mean, I'm happy to add E in if you want to personally. Um, I thought A and B were squarely aligned with what I think yes. you're doing. I don't know what you guys think. I, I thought the same, but I thought E would be helpful too, just to have that data. Yeah. I would agree with those. I, the only thing when I'm looking at how many were on the, it looked like mm -hmm. we need, we're going to need to pare some down in the end anyway, so maybe we could look. Since we all agree on A and B, keep those and then maybe keep E in parentheses yep. Cause you to see which, which ones yeah. we want to eliminate at the end. Yep. Okay. So keep, so potentially keep E, but if we look yep. between, we'll. So management operations, I think you picked A and E. Yes, I did. So we can maybe go back to the chart and it's easier. Okay. So we've got, um, when I looked at it, and I think Dr. Hammer said the same thing, uh, environment kind of goes with your goal two. And mm -hmm. goal two was to continue to 
grassroots methods to build the repertoires of administrators, faculty, and staff with the hopes of ensuring greater social and psychological safety for all students. So really creating an environment in which we can be successful. So um, to me, the AA makes sense. Um, the fiscal systems kind of goes with your goal one, which is to conduct yes. an analysis of school facilities and develop a capital budget reflective of perceived needs, which clearly is a priority this year. Mm -hmm. So I thought these made total sense. Um, yep. Can I tell you something very exciting about 2A? Uh, we have just received, again, through Senate President Spilga's office, a $100,000 earmark for um, culturally proficient um, social, emotional, and mental health work. That's awesome. fantastic. It she's has such to be. An advocate for oh, us. she's she wonderful. We have to spend it before June thirtieth, twenty twenty. I bet we can do that. I bet I can so too. <laughs> yes, but so, it's been wonderful. I mean, we've been able to research in the last week. Jen Parson and I have researched so many programs, and you know, just starting to call up teachers and would you like to do this? Fantastic. Yeah. Well, oh, and that really uh, fits well with how we have been focusing on. Um, both diversity and social emotional. Yes. Learning. Yes. I think we do a lot of work in D in the in the policies and the you know I think mm -hmm. in and you have brought forth um, some new policies this year as well around um, sort of gender equality and and so forth. I think we we do that well. I mean all of the things we do all of this is all part of your job. Um, so, but I don't really feel personally a need to highlight D um, and C sort of similar. B, we've talked about in the past about um, diversity in our hiring and the reality of, and we try so hard, I think we, we're continuing to try to keep that as a, as a goal, but I know that the reality of the candidate pool um, has limited our success. Um, you know, I kind of, I looked a little at B, but I, I, I'm definitely comfortable with A and E. Um, and B too, uh, Mrs. Polnick, the HR director, has just just put together or she's starting to put together um, just a subcommittee to take a look at you know issues of gender are we actually being you know fair equitable sensitive to um, all people you know as we look at things like um, the teacher contract for example you know what does that language look like um, and that yeah that has really come up just recently I think it's surfaced because of another issue um, around um, teachers and absenteeism and you know who you're able to be out of school for and who you're not able to be out of school for like with things like bereavement family care um, so that I think will be a really nice asset to you know what we're already doing what do you think Meg I agree I think a and E are the ones that we could probably contribute the most helpful response to I mean, I think you've, you've covered all of these quite well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think A and E seem to be the topic of our conversation most of the time in most school committee meetings. I agree. Okay. So in family and community, um, standard three, I think you picked B, C, and D. Yes. So, okay. yeah. So B is sharing responsibility, and C is communication. Culturally, culturally proficient communication and D family concerns indicator. So for um, I I had B and C. I, I personally, when I was going through it, I definitely think those are really important. Um, they align with the strategic priorities a lot. I think we have um, priorities around growing partnerships between families and schools. I'm looking at the strategic priorities chart, which can be found on our website. Um, but I think I think the um, sharing responsibility and the communications really are right on this chart. A lot of that is, is in our strategic priority. Mm -hmm. So, um, and D, family and concerns indicator. I, I take that one a lot as your involvement in, in family concerns, like sort of one-on-one, -on -one, which I think you do a very good job of. Mm -hmm. And you obviously do it every day. We can highlight it if you want. I don't, it's, I don't know what you guys think. I, I think D Hi. is kind of <laughs> folded okay. into B, Pardon? to a certain extent. Family support and family concerns that I didn't feel like we needed to have family concerns as well. Right. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mina had specifically mentioned B and D, but I'm 
I can see also where I feel do feel that D kind of does fold into part of B there. In the role, there's no getting away from D. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, right. There's it, not. It, that's it, yes. it is what we do all the time. Wait, yeah. Are there any you can get away with? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like they're all. <laughs> Um, are we okay with not having A on here? That was the one that you mm -hmm. left off. So if, we, if we're okay with the ones that you suggested, let's kind of move on and then we'll come back and whittle the last few yeah. out. Okay, so the last standard is professional culture. Um, you had B, C, and E. Yes. So cultural proficiency, um, I think links really nicely with your goal to, again, the one to, to build a healthy environment um, for learning for everyone. Um, I think the C, the strong communication, really goes a lot with your goal three, to grow communication between families and, and the superintendent and grow relationships with elected officials. Um, and the shared vision of E, right, is E, mm -hmm. um, to me is something that we're talking about a lot with our um, our new uh, community engagement mm -hmm. subcommittee and sort of where are we going and where are we going with our enrollment projections and it seems become like it's becoming really central to the work we're doing even though it's not exactly called out in a goal or um, priority so I'm okay with these three personally what do you guys think yeah I mean I wasn't here for the beginning of your discussion but I feel I feel like if we're gonna you, what you just said sort of alluded to my thoughts. They're, they all are part of the package, so it's hard to pick out a couple of them. And part of me feels like, I don't want to say I'm ambivalent, but I feel like the ones that we choose, I think no matter what we choose, we're going to find some good things to highlight. Right. Yeah. So, I right. agree. Yeah. So I'm fairly yeah. open to any, you know, anyone, if anyone feels strongly about something, I feel like and all of them are, you know, that's the reason why they're there is because they're all important, right? Yeah. So, so if anyone feels strongly about pulling out a particular one, I'm open to hearing about it because, yeah. So what, where we we got to is we're looking at the ones that Dr. Kavanaugh had suggested right. reflect the priorities that she seems to be focused on. Okay. Um, if we look at all of those, I think we come up with 11, and they kind of recommend six to eight. Mm -hmm. So in the areas where we have three per category, if we could pick two, um, unless Dr. Kevin wants to keep 11. I mean, it's, we can keep 11. There's no like hard, fast rule. Right. But um, if we can go to the three categories that have the three and see if there's one we want to eliminate, that mm -hmm. would be where we go next. Otherwise, we yeah. do go ahead with the 11. There seems to be no argument against. We're all happy with what you picked. So. Yeah, okay. I really don't mind the 11. Yeah. Truthfully. It's still yes. less than what you did last year. Oh. Right? <laughs> right? Significantly <laughs> less. Than so, that. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a break so, either way, right? Yeah. In terms of evaluation process. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, do we need a motion for that? I do believe it says motion is to specify indicators taken from the. So, I think the motion would be to accept the 11 indicators as put forward. I so will make that motion. Motion, so by motion by Meg. Second. Second by Amanda. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. And it is unanimous and so carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Amanda, for all your work on that. I think yes. it's great. I think we're moving into best practices, which is I agree. which is great. And I think it'll be helpful for everybody. I feel like we're going in with a much clearer vision this year going into the evaluation process yes. and able to focus on those smaller things. So, so I appreciate your work on getting us into the pilot here. And in the future, we'll bring back the procedure. Just to mean as comments. Perfect. Yes. yes. Perfect. And we can skip over new business items A, B, C, and D because we covered those earlier out of order. And that brings us to new business E, which is the Hopkinton High School BPA yeah. final <laughs> overnight approval. Yes. So, yeah, doesn't that just feel like a nice I know. I, at first, I thought I only missed one thing. I was like, wow, perfect. But <laughs> clearly, I missed much more than that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, we are looking for you to approve the Hopkinton High School Business Professional of America's uh, Club uh, attendance at the state conference. It is an overnight conference. They will be going to, I believe, the Sheraton in Framingham. And they are there from the 29th of February to the 2nd of March. Okay, sounds good. Any yeah. comments, questions, or do we have a motion to uh, make the approval of the final 
HHSBPA State Conference final overnight travel from February 29th to March 2nd, 2020. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And it so covers. Carries. Uh, that brings us into item F, which is the gift fund approval. Okay, this one's very easy. Um, the BD family has given to Mr. Hay um, some choral music and piano music. Um, so, you know, all of those kinds of sheet music are typically very expensive, and he's just looking for your approval to accept that gift. It was so moved. Motion by Meg. Second. Second by Amanda. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And carries. And yes, thank you. That's a, a very generous. I love it. And that brings us to uh, item G, which is budget transfers. Okay, so Mrs. Rothermick is looking for you to approve these budget transfers. Um, I will try to go through them as best I can. Uh, so I think you can see up at the top here under the Hopkins School, it looks like. Um, we have overdrawn the principal PD and the Hopkins Hop Hopkins Professional Development sub account in the amount of $1,000, and it looks like she is just replacing that $1,278. Um, the extraordinary maintenance that you see that Mr. Person needs apparently is coming from the re systematic replacement of some hand dryers in the bathrooms. Uh, what you see in repair and maintenance is um, just very typical repair and maintenance, things like HVAC and boiler maintenance. Uh, and so you can see where that is uh, overdrawn, right down there in um, high school equipment repair and maintenance. Uh, we have middle school office supplies. It looks like we just need to move $100 there. Um, and Dr. Zaleski um, also has um, just a couple of things in special education transportation and special education um, contracted services. So just to confirm all the transfers from the, the accounts that have a surplus are monies that those accounts aren't spending or they, don't, they won't need. Correct. This, this will point. all just even yeah. out. All of those balances okay. come to zero. Yep. Other questions? Thanks. Yes. Seek a motion to approve the budget transfers as requested. So moved. Motion by Meg. Second. Second by Amanda. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Unanimous and so carries. And that brings us to item H, which is transportation fees. Dr. Cavanaugh. Okay. Um, so you know that last time we were together, we did have conversations about um, raising the transportation fee. Um, to $200 for a rider, and I believe we can cap to that at $400. Um, tomorrow, the policy subcommittee, will, um, policy working group, will be meeting, and um, we're probably going to be opening up the transportation policy. So I'm not really looking for any kind of a vote this evening, but I did want to have just a discussion around that tonight so that anyone who's home and watching has a sense that, yes, we're opening up the transportation policy. I want to do that with as much transparency as we possibly can. The Go only ahead. comment I had for Mina is looking for um, to understand the context of the policy better, which will come as it gets opened. Yes, uh, and you know one of the things we've shared this with the teachers so that they are not taken sur by surprise. Um, but you know we may like to next year be able to have just two tiers of buses as opposed to three tiers of buses. Um, if you are at the Hopkins School now, you'll notice that we are sending out loads and loads of buses that in some cases have fewer than 20 students on them just because they've got to get to the furthest reaches of town and then get back to do the Elmwood Marathon run. Um, and then maybe some of the other things that we are looking at just to be again very transparent is you know currently we allow students to have two morning buses two afternoon buses um, we may need to you know sort of curtail the number of buses that each student is is able to ride in a week because if I have two morning buses it means that I have I'm holding a seat on this one and I'm holding a seat on that one so and for some number of days in the week there are vacant seats riding around um, the town and, and that costs us money so I feel like I can hear my inbox filling up. Yep. I know, yep. you probably can, <laughs> yes. Um, but that's great to get that information out to the community. I think it's important. Discussion and transparency. One question I have is, I know that 
it takes a while for them to build the bus routes. It, yes. What is the timeline that we're looking to get this brought back here from the policy committee? I would like to be able to bring it back, um, if not at our next meeting, the one after that. Okay. Um, and we really are sort of on, you know, that, that quick treadmill kind of thing right now because um, Mrs. Fitzpatrick will start building those bus routes right. probably mid-March. I, I was thinking it was coming soon. Yes. And I was... I was also thinking that we may want more than one reading of the policy, so yes. oh, not, not to put pressure on the policy. Well, but also, but too, like some of these changes are, are procedural, so they won't be affected by the policy, too. So, for example, mm -hmm. if we went to two tiers of buses, that's not in the policy. Right. Mm -hmm. So we could, if we needed to fix that for bus routes, that you know, yes. be being yeah. quick about that, getting that turned around, that's separate. Yes. But yeah, 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 there's, we, we feel the pressure. Yeah. We got it. <laughs> And, and it just, is a priority just, policy sorry. right now. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It is. And just to clarify, so when we say two tiers, we mean two different starting times. One for the elementary school, one for exactly. everybody else. Yes. Right now yeah. we have three start times. We would be going to two start times. Because not everyone may speak tier yep. language. Right. Yes. You're right. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> yeah. so just to follow up on Nancy's question, um, if we were to change the transportation fees, mm -hmm. when would we want, when, when is our deadline for doing that, do you think? That would also need to happen pretty quickly because it will not be long before we open up that online portal where people can start paying their bus fees for next year. Okay. And is that when people yeah. also submit their parking payments? Parking's later, I think. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure when. I think parking's May. Is my right, and I only recall that because we had to turn it in like the day of the prom when my daughter was doing. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, and the but the bus applications I think are a little earlier than that. They are. April, yes. Maybe. Yes. Um, like early April. I almost went. They start then anyway, so that and they have a window and then they close. Okay. And I believe that there are actually two tardy deadlines. So there's one that will happen, you know, if you pay, say, for example, after June 1st, and then there's another that would happen okay. if you, you know, paid in August or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for mm -hmm. the, um, the heads up for everybody on that. Sure. So that brings us to item I, which is the website subcommittee survey results. And that is That's you. That's me. Dr. Kavanaugh, do you have the slide? I do. There it is. Whew. Okay, so um, this is a bit of an academic uh, report out in that the website is clearly up and running, but we had committed as a subcommittee that we would um, come back after the site was up and running for a while, do a survey of users, and just get a sense of how well we met our objectives when we launched um, this project way back in 2018. So um, this, we did a survey, if we could just go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, where do we start? In October of 2018, um, we did a user forum and we ran some, some users through various scenarios of activities that we do on a website and we observed them, we took their feedback on what was working, what wasn't working, and we combined that with the results of a sur survey that we had done to the whole community and the, um, the knowledge of the tech department um, about what we needed to improve, what was working, what wasn't working, what was actually legal and not legal in terms of accessibility and so forth. So we combined all of that together to come up with our requirements. Um, and some of the things that came up back in 2018 were that there was too much insider knowledge required to navigate our site. There was a lot of like inside lingo. So stu uh, families who were moving from other towns didn't really know what the words meant. So they, they didn't know how to navigate because they didn't know what source book was or they didn't know what my HHS Today was, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, another thing that came up was that our, we, need, we needed an effective site search. That was a very strong demand. Um, people didn't want necessarily better navigation, although I think that always helps, but they, they said we can't search the site. If you ever tried to search the old site, it really didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, they wanted to um, use clear and not clever link icons. We used to use, I think, a Hillers logo, say, for our schedules for athletics, and it was confusing. Do you click on the H, or is it just there in support of the Hillers? You know, it was unclear what those things were. Um, for the major content areas, people were looking for a landing page that explained the basics. Again, we have a lot of new families, so for families who've been here for a long time, this was maybe not a high priority, but new families wanted to know what is the English department teaching, or what is athletics, what is Tri-Valley League? I mean, there were some basics that people just didn't know. Um, 
most of the teacher pages on our old site had some had links, some didn't have links, some links were active, some were outdated. Basically, it was like business card level information. So they were looking to simplify the teacher pages. Um, and for district departments, make it clear for something like music. Is it music for the high school or is it music for the district? It, it, it got confusing sometimes what part of the website you were on, a school part or a, a district part. So those are some of the basics from the user forum. Again, we combine that with our other inputs and then we move forward. So if we go to the next slide. So we distributed a survey this past November. Um, the site went live in the summer and um, we did not have a huge response, which I think says that A, people are busy, and B, I think if people were really, really upset, we probably would have heard more. Um, that said, I, you know, even though there wasn't a huge response, I think there is something we can learn from the response that we got. Um, the respondents spanned parents and employees and students and administrator and one student intern. Um, most of the respondents have been website users for more than six years. That comes up later because what we found was that people who are new to the district adjusted more easily, which kind of makes sense. People who are, have been here and were used to other ways of navigating have had a little bit more trouble um, transitioning. General positives we got, the site appeal um, was great, uh, representation of Hopkinton in terms of who we are as a district, people felt very positive about, and there was an increased confidence in the content on the website, yeah. which really speaks to work that Mr. Ghosh and Mrs. Henderson have done and, and their teams and the um, your administrators and the principals and their admins have worked a lot and are continuing to work on content. Um, and that is an ongoing, I mean, the site is a living site. So content is living and it's ongoing. Um, so we're still working on that, but people felt more confident in what they were seeing. The two um, main negatives that uh, I kind of took away from the survey were the ease of finding information, which we're gonna talk about, and difficulty learning how to navigate. So if we just move on. So finding information was question seven on our survey, and we asked how well does the site meet your needs to access different types of information. Um, we asked about general dis district and school info, district and school announcements, calendar and events, forms, et cetera. You can see that. I pulled out forms and school newsletters and media because people who said it was great or just okay, um, you know, we're like two-thirds, but still a third were not happy, and that seemed to be a pretty high number of people who were not happy. So if you go to the next mm -hmm. slide. So talking about finding information, um, the new site has deliberately been redesigned to move away from a long list of quick links on the home pages. The old site, for those of us who are used to it, you kind of knew where the quick links were on the side and they were a little different, different orders for each school, but it was comfortable and we kind of knew what was there. We got used to um, kind of the way it was laid out. It wasn't consistent and we wanted to move away from that deliberately, but that is causing some frustration, I think, for people. It's a, it's a new learning process to, to move away from that to the site search. Um, some of the challenges people also cited were due to missing or outdated content. Again, we're still working, even though it's already almost March and the site went live in the summer. Again, it's a living entity and we've added a lot of new content, so there's still a lot of content being written. So. Um, suggestions for next steps on finding information. Uh, we're talking about publishing or and, and or having on the site maybe a link to an, or, an orientation guide. We had sent out in the summer uh, a set of slides to kind of orient people to the website. A lot of people were on vacation in the summer, probably didn't get that email, um, and we didn't send it out again. Uh, we put it in the packet for tonight for those who have referenced our school committee packet, but. Um, if we think it might be helpful to share with people, how do you find site search? How do you find the quick links under students and families? And how do you use bookmarks, um, which we'll talk about later? Um, continue to look at the site analytics. Um, this is something Mr. Ghosh and his team do um, to see if we have actually put links on the student and families quick links that represent the most frequently accessed pages. He's constantly reviewing those and updating the, um, what the quick links are, and we can take another look at that. We need to continue to update and improve the site content and review the page layout. Um, people did comment that there were some of the image sizes are too large and it's hard to get to the content. Mm -hmm. So reevaluating the balance of space is something that I think we should do as next steps. And, and the subcommittee has looked at this and agreed um, that these are good next steps. So 
On the site features, the new site has some new features. Uh, question eight was about how well the site features, or how have the site features impacted your experience? It was positive, no change, no impact, or negative. I didn't put the no impact responses up here because there was no impact. Um, but two of the areas I pulled out that people seemed to be struggling with or having a negative impact were calendaring and news and the find it faster site search. Again, it was a bit ironic because those are areas that we worked really hard to, to include and clearly for some people we're not, um, we're not connecting yet. So on the next slide we can talk about that. So for the calendar and the news, people didn't actually give a lot of specific comments, but there was a general comment that there are too many clicks to get through, uh, I think, to get to the information that you're looking for. Um, the find it fast and site search, some people love it and, and commented to that degree, and some people found that it was a difficult shift, as we talked about already. General design comments, too much space for pictures, which is what I mentioned. Um, too many clicks to find basic information like lunch menus and dismissal forms, and too much navigation when you're using the mobile site. So suggested next steps here would be to um, instruct the community on setting up bookmarks and use, utilizing district mobile apps and site search. Again, I think there's some learning curve there. Um, like you can bookmark the the family, student and families page with the click links. And then you don't have to do all those clicks, you, your bookmark will take you right there. Um, but I'm not sure people use bookmarks very much, um, which comes up in the survey. Uh, also consider, again, the balance of image and text. And in the news section, we have a news section for schools to utilize, but again, this is a new feature and not all schools are using it to the same extent. So I think it's, again, learning for the administrators and their staff to figure out how best to get news out with the news site. So I'd almost like to check back in a year and see how we're doing, because I think these are new features and we're just figuring out the capabilities. A quick look at who answered the survey. Um, one of the questions is, when searching for information, where do you typically begin? Um, a lot of people started the Google browser, 21%. Site search or find it fast from the home page was 17%. Menu navigation, about 26%, etc. Only 0.9% use any bookmarks. So again, I think when you talk to Mr. Ghosh and, and other people who are um, happy users, they do make use of that um, technique. So this survey question kind of reinforced the idea that more training or education could be done. Um, what devices do you usually use to access the website? Phone is 56%, tablet 17, and computer 83. Um, interestingly enough, the phone usage didn't really increase from our initial survey, despite yeah. the fact that the old site didn't actually really work on the phone. <laughs> so I'm not sure how well we've um, educated people that we, they can use the new site on their phones. I'm not sure how much people really think to do that. Um, I just found that interesting. So. So the summary is, in general, I think our new site delivers well in most areas um, that were originally raised in the user forum, in the survey, and areas that were known to the district administration, like translation, accessibility, and mobile. Um, most of the respondents are generally happy. Um, users who are comfortable with the navigation on the previous site seem to be struggling a little bit more on the new site. And um, we are continuing to update the log of um, sort of bugs and enhancements and um, areas for improvement. And as I mentioned, all of this has gone back to Mr. Ghosh. So um, one of the things I do want to point out about content, reminding people again that this is a living, breathing resource that changes and, and evolves daily as content is updated. We have put a webmaster and student data support person in our budget this year. and. Part of that person's job would be to be the webmaster to maintain the, comment, uh, this, the content and take that burden off of our subject matter leaders, district department heads, and administrators. Um, the other part would be for student data support. And I know, um, just listening to Mr. Bishop's update earlier about uh, Mrs. Henderson and her job in doing scheduling. And I mean, Mrs. Henderson wears a lot of hats. And she's onboarding students and setting up um, power school for families and managing our schedules and there's a lot of data and as our, our enrollment grows, our data needs grow. So um, the subcommittee is in full support of this budget <laughs> item for this um, webmaster person. And just 
mentioning the subcommittee. I just want to thank the subcommittee. These poor people who are so generous with their time were recruited in September of 2018. And um, I am going to request that the school committee tonight disband our group. I think this is the end of our um, committed charter. Um, but we had um, excellent participation from the district technology team, a number of content owners, and many community members, as you can see on our slide, who came to our meetings. Everybody on this slide contributed significantly to what, the work that we did. And um, I just can't thank them enough. So. That's great. Great. so with that, I would like to ask the school committee to disband us, unless you have questions or comments. Or it's been a huge undertaking, I know, and thank you to everybody you've listed in to you yes. um, for really kind of spearheading behind all of this along with Mr. Ghosh and everybody up there. Yeah. It uh, It's certainly been a big change. Yeah, a good change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put, you all put in a tremendous amount of work. Yes, this, and this the sweat team. and tears and all that. Yeah, that group, that <clears throat> entire group, and and it, it is a fantastic website. The change, yes. I mean, it does take a lot of getting used to, and but it's awesome that you're reevaluating what happened and then you know thinking about how you could even improve on on this yes. improvement. Yeah. Um. So I mean, but compared to the old website, I mean, this is like night and day. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. And so. I Oh, Go ahead. No, nope. I, I know some of the things that were bugs in the beginning have been worked out and improved upon. As I, I was thinking about just looking at the find it fast stuff in the beginning, some of the links didn't work, and I wonder if some of the people who didn't love mm. that aspect of it yeah. had had a bad experience before it was fully yeah up right. And right. Yeah, there is there is still, and I can tell you, there is still a fairly lengthy list of yeah. known improvements that need to be made. Um, Again, it's just bandwidth for mm -hmm. our tech department that does so much for the for the yeah. district. So they are they are known. Many of them are known. But I would also encourage people if you encounter a difficulty with the website, please email webmaster at hopkinton.k12.ma.us, and that will go to Mr. Ghosh and his team, and they will put those um, identified bugs and requests into their list. And, and, they'll, they'll and they they'll have responded to things. I know people in the community have uh, uh, things like the dismissal form being more easily accessible mm -hmm. on the yes. website. So. Yeah. Well then, so. And maybe it'll get solved faster if there's a webmaster to address yeah. all these Right, concerns, exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So. so you're looking for a motion I from think us we're done unless you want us to do more. I mean, I think we're good. Yeah. Website I think we're good. No, it, it did Just, a great job. Yeah. Is there a motion then? So moved. Disband, second. I'll second. Motion by Meg and a second by Jen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. It is unanimous, and okay. you are so relieved of um, this tremendous amount of work. It was an honor. It was two years fun. Fun. Yeah. fun. Thank, Thank you. you for doing that. Thank you. So that then brings us up to item J, which is the Student Opportunity Act update, uh, and that is for both you and Ms. Barath, who has given me. Do you want to speak first, and then I'll give her comment or other way around? Uh, I'll just very quickly say she and I did meet. Uh, we started talking about some of the data that might inform the things that we do with our Student um, Opportunity Act money. Today, Mrs. Parson also met with the Assistant Superintendent over in Medway just to sort of see what they are doing. And um, Dr. Zaleski has also been thinking about uh, some of the data from her department and, and thinking about how we might want to um, look at changing, moving sort of the needle there as well. Yeah. Great. Looking forward to that. What yes. Nina had to say was, I am most excited about this opportunity to review as a community what we can do with the funds earmarked through Student Opportunity Act. While the funding is not in millions, it is substantive for a fiscal year to make inroads in areas in which we definitely require work. The initial planning with Dr. Cavanaugh has been very productive, and I am eager to work further in this area. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And that moves us down into... Can I ask I, a fast oh, question on that? Course. I don't want to slow things down here. You guys are in such a roll. <laughs> but, um, but, but my question, so I, was, I, have, I have a ton of resources. If anybody else is interested in this, looking at it, from, I'm, I'm sure you don't need them. But if any of us need information about this act. But one of the deadlines seems like it's really close. April 1st, I yeah. think. We have to submit our short form. Right. Yes. So do you, I do feel like we're on board to meet that deadline? I think we'll be okay. 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 Yeah. That moves us then into the community engagement group, and that is you, Dr. Kavanaugh. 
Yes. So you can see that we have um, taken that memo. Um, and I did make another adjustment to it. Are we in old business or new business right now? I do are in um, old business. Old business, great. Down towards the bottom. Okay. Uh, so when I, when I made the changes to that memo, I tried to do it bearing in mind the conversation that we had on Monday night. Um, and, you know, I mean, we can decide to put this group, this subcommittee together tonight. We can postpone it. Uh, but what I did, I kind of kept the composition there. So when uh, Mrs. Devlin and I met, we looked at uh, the idea of including two administrators, the director of finance and operations, director of building and grounds, three educators, school committee member, two community members, a representative from the HPTA, a representative from CPAC, an at-large member of another town board or committee. And what I added after our conversation on Monday was either the town CFO or a member of the Board of Appropriations because I felt like looking at that list, we really probably needed somebody who was living in the fiscal side yeah. that, that right. had been sort of yeah. glaringly missing to me after, after Monday. Um, so that's what we have, the community engagement group. Um, the tasks, I left almost the same, except I think I did include that fourth bullet that says to make recommendations to the community regarding school building configurations, taking into account all available data. Um, that first paragraph also changed up at the top, uh, and it, that really mirrors the language we discussed on Monday. The community engagement group will be assembled as a subcommittee of the Hopkinton School Committee to work with a selected vendor to engage the community in the creation of potential campus master plans for our schools in response to student enrollment increases and other drivers in the town of Hopkinton. So that's, that's where we are. So question just in terms of looking at order here so are you, you looking to get this up and running prior to the town meeting so that we're ready to go looking at put to send the RFP out if it's approved or when are you looking to have the group start meeting I guess would be my I mean I think you know there are probably yeah. some aspects of the group that we could do before you even had that's, a vendor right I mean collecting I all thinking. of that that data yeah. is really important like we have I think a lot of data from the capacity study but I think that there's probably I mean when they did the feasibility study for example for marathon one of the things that they had done was they looked at all of the open tracts of land on which you could size wise and you know in terms of wetlands and that sort of thing be able to put a school um, so maybe just gathering those kinds of documents would be super helpful so that when um, it when or if town meeting actually approves the money and we put out the RFP come July 1st we are just ready to hit the ground running so I'm in no hurry tonight but I mean I think it makes sense to put that subcommittee together yeah. you know it's long before July 1st for sure. sure it'll take some time to get What's the word? Applicants, folks to volunteer for this as yes. well and to sort through if I you get victims. I, think yeah. Yeah. I was trying to find a nice in. way to put it. You know, there, there are a lot of steps. Yeah. Victims. <laughs> yeah. victims is right. Uh, I imagine there would be a fair amount of interest in this. I right? suspect there, yeah. Especially in some of these these um, categories, there'll be yeah. multiple for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a comment from uh, Mina. As she said, I am excited to see the possible inclusion of CFO member of a slash member of appropriations committee this is an excellent idea my request to the committee is to consider for CEG to have two school committee members on it given the interest my vote is for I don't for you and I is what she said um, <laughs> Amanda and I uh, you both bring different strengths and perspectives and I think it will make the group stronger the focus of CEG needs to be well defined it may be simply physical spaces, buildings, grounds, play spaces, teacher planning areas, restrooms, and very importantly, maintenance of the same. When we speak of spaces, numbers are driving a lot of these conversations. Our teachers have reminded us that numbers alone do not tell the complete story. What are the needs of the students is a pertinent question. We need to remember that. We need to have a programmatic and staffing plan in place as well. It may not happen through CEG, it may be through other ways, but this planning is also needed, including financial implications. So 
with that, do we want to at least approve the creation of the committee and do we want to go ahead and figure out how we're going to do it or do we want to leave that for? Um, I think it's a good idea to add another school committee member because I know for the elementary school building committee we had two. Right. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have yeah. a backup right. and yeah. an addition there. So That's a good point. I and, concur. And if yeah. you want to try to keep the, um, you know, the, the yeah. committee itself, if, we, if you don't want it to get too big, we had, for the elementary school building committee, we had, even though both of us would go, yeah. there was one voting member and then another member who was there to kind of contribute to the discussion. Not that I, I don't think that it'll make too much of a difference yeah, one way or the other, yeah. but just something to consider. Yeah. I, it, I didn't count all the numbers, but it's also nice sometimes to have an odd number of right. positions, uh, of voting people so that you end up with. Ooh, if we have another school committee member, it would give us an odd number. So that would be yeah. another That's argument like another for reason, adding yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't. So two but if you throw me in the mix, you, are you one of the I two administrators or no? I hadn't thought of myself as one of the I, two I didn't administrators. Know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it would be two administrators plus you. That that was was the well, sort of in my head. Okay. So that would that put us at an odd number? That would put us at sixteen. I think there are 15 here right now, and I would make number 16. But if, if did, I'm doing if the math correctly, second, if we had a second school committee member, that would put us back to odd. No, I think I counted two. So let's see: two, three, four, seven, nine, eleven, okay. twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen people. You could add another people, community 16. member. That wouldn't hurt. Another Do you want to take one educator out? We'll no. keep the educator. No. I'd rather that. add another person. Than okay. So right, could, you could say at large, and you could look at the applications that come in. Want to go to three community members? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we go to three community members, now we're at seventeen, and that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's big. I think we probably had seventeen for the calendar subcommittee. Right. Yeah. That oh, generated an yeah. awful lot of interest. Yes. And the meetings flowed okay. <laughs> they, they were really? fine. All right, really? Great. Okay. <laughs> Don't you think they were fine? I think so. Did they I go well? I think so. And I think right. the, the more you have there in case of sickness and mm -hmm. yeah. other yeah. engagements, it's, we, we can't suffer from that. Yeah. Correct. So I would seek a motion then to move to approve the establishment of a subcommittee named the Community Engagement Group, CEG, to work with a selected vendor to engage the community in the creation of a potential campus master plan, or plural, for our schools in response to student enrollment increases and other drivers in the town of Hopkinton. So moved. Okay. I want to do that motion. Can I just ask one question first? Sorry, I didn't yes. do in before. Um, we had talked about a co-chair, a school committee member, and Dr. Kavanaugh's co-chairs. Does that, do we want to write that in here, or is that, does that need to be identified? Or? I don't know that it needs to be identified. Okay. I do like the yeah. changes to the wording. I think it reflects the conversation on Monday very nicely. I do too. So. And the committee can kind of, in kind of its first meeting, to a point, figure that talk out. That yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's a good, good question. <laughs> Just one. That's okay. So, motion by Meg? Yes. And is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Second by Amanda. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. And it so carries. That then brings us down into future agenda items. Anybody have anything they'd like to suggest going forward? We are going to have to bring the um, procedure for the superintendent uh, summative evaluation back, okay. the school committee procedure. So that'll be great. coming, oh, not great. the next meeting, but in a couple meetings. Now that we're through budget, it seems like things are cranking up on your end with the... Okay. So that brings us then for our second opportunity for public comment. Seeing no public, um, we can move into items by consensus. And there were a whole ton of notes for George Ed. Yeah, that's my role. <laughs> as superintendent, I recommend that the school committee approve the items by consensus as outlined in your agenda. So move. Um, sorry. Dr. Hibbert, I had sent a few minor typo edits to George Ed from the minutes. There are just a few minor, oh. they were literally typos, and I think she had corrected them, but I don't know if that is what we're looking for. Do you want me to highlight those for the committee? Does, is, they're not in the packet, I don't think. Yes, I, well, I know that she got them, so yes, if you wanted to highlight them, that would be great, and then we'll just make sure that they are right. taken care of before that happens. Excellent. That's very good. Um, 
I have to find them. Let's see, minor changes. Let's see. On the February 6th, um, 2020 minutes, it said other IEMS instead of items. It's minor, but it also, um, there's a typo in John Westerling's name. It was John Westerly instead of John Westerling, um, because I think it's hard to hear mm. on the audio. And on the, the 2nd of January, um, I think there was a typo with ballet questions instead of yes, ballet questions, which I know. Yep. <laughs> she and I had a nice exchange on how nice ballet questions sounds. But <laughs> um, I think she was um, confirming the name of the student council rep who was here. Okay. But I wasn't sure on the spelling of okay. the question, the, mm -hmm. um, Caitlin Boyce's spelling, and she was going to look that up. Okay. Minor. Okay. And that's good because if all of those minutes get approved, they can go to the MSBA. It's oh, lovely. excellent. Yes. So the motion would be to approve the items by consensus with the um, noted amendments. So moved. Motion by Meg. Second. Second by Amanda. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. At, so carries, I'm also an aye. And that brings us down to adjournment, which I do want to point out. <laughs> we are an hour intent. Not that I'm being competitive <laughs> with our chair who is not here. Case, and we do miss. Well, we had a long stretch Monday night. We did. So we did. Yes. yes. I think we already time. put our time in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it all balances out. It balances out. So is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, so moved. Second. I'll second that. Second by Amanda. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 And we are adjourned this evening at 8.35 p.m. Our next meeting is here in the high school library on March 12th, 2020, and our chair will be back with us at that point. Thank you all, and have a good night. <laughs>